All right, next up we have the reaction quotient or Q. Uh, the reaction quotient is just like K, uh, except uh, K, the equilibrium constant, we calculate using equilibrium concentrations. Q, we calculate the same way as K, but we don't use necessarily equilibrium concentration. So maybe we're given initial concentrations. Can plug that into our, what I call Q expression, as you'll see in a little bit. Looks just like the K expression. And then we can calculate Q and then go from there. So um, looks very similar to the definition of the equilibrium constant. It is the ratio of the product of the concentrations of the products over the product of the concentrations of the reactants in any situation equilibrium or otherwise. And this is called the reaction quotient. So a couple things regarding the value of Q. If Q is equal to K, that means that the reaction is at equilibrium. And if Q is greater, sorry, which way do we do first? Sorry. If Q is smaller than K, that means the system is not at equilibrium and the forward reaction is favored. So in order for um, Q to equal K, um, we need more products. And so we need to go in the forward uh, direction. So the amount of reactants will be decreasing while the amount of products will be increasing. Uh, conversely, if Q is larger than K, that means the system is not at equilibrium and the reverse reaction is favored, uh, meaning to reach equilibrium, the reaction needs to go in the reverse direction, use up more of the products and form more of the reactants. Let's take a look at 17.4 on 667. So read along with me. It says at a very high temperature, Kc is 65.0 for the following reaction. So the following concentrations were detected in a mixture. Is the, e is the system at equilibrium? If not, which direction must the reaction proceed for equilibrium to be established? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our values and we're going to plug those uh, concentrations into our uh, Q expression. So let's write that. So again, Q expression is the same as the equilibrium expression, except we don't put Q equals, sorry, we don't put K equals, we put Q equals. So we have concentration of hydrogen times concentration of iodine all over concentration of hydrogen iodide squared. Plug in our numbers. So if you turn the page, you can see the setup with the numbers in place. We have 2.80 for the H2. 3.40 for the I2, and we have 0 0.500 for the HI. Don't forget to square that. And so what we end up with is 38.1. So our next step, always, and we'll be doing this with uh, QSP and KSPs when we get to solubility product constants in chapter, I don't know what chapter that is, 21 maybe. And so what we want to do is compare the Q to the K. So given to us originally is that the K for this reaction is 65. So Q is smaller than the K. So how can this system reach equilibrium? Well, this needs to go up. So how does that value increase? This has got to go up and this has got to go down. We need to increase the amounts of H2 and I2. We need to decrease the amount of HI. So we're talking about going faster in the forward direction. So forward reaction needs to speed up um, or needs to continue going, progressing until that system then reaches equilibrium. All right, so let's take a look at uh, one you can do on your own, page 695, number 41. Uh, same type of situation, we're given the equilibrium constant, we're given some concentrations, plug those into your Q expression, calculate Q and compare Q to K. So go ahead and pause the video, do that now. All right, so here's what we get. I guess we have one sig fig in our answer for Q. So it's about 500. Uh, the Q is much bigger than the KC that's given to us in the problem. So in order for equilibrium to be reached, this needs to go down, this needs to go up. So we need to decrease the amount of reactants, increase the amount of products. That means we have to advance in the reverse direction. All right, that concludes this lesson. Next time we will have the Chatelier's Principle. Thanks for watching.